Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Professor Stevenson talked about Brian Cox. Well, I'm the hapless minister coming on after Brian Cox, except on this occasion it's after three Brian Coxes. It's not really fair, uh, having listened to the enthusiasm, uh, uh, and it's, it's the enthusiasm that, that, that really got me, from Professor Manning, from Professor Shipton, and from Professor Stevenson. And I think for all of you who, like me, who are non-scientists, and I'm sure some of you are scientists, uh, to be able to understand what is happening here, and we hope we're going to learn more, it is just so exciting. We are so pleased you're so enthused, and we're so pleased that you're looking forward to such engagement, um, particularly with the scientific community, but engagement with the community here, and I hope we'll hear more about that from Glasgow City Council in due course, that... It is breathtaking. So it is absolutely wonderful to be here to witness this project getting, as I was advised, off the ground, though on this occasion it's obviously uh, going down through the ground. And I think it's a good symbol of our transition to green energy, something that we are committed to. I think we've got a good record, and I particularly um, think that what Claire Perry, my uh, fellow minister in Bayes is doing on green energy it, it, it is absolutely great and it demonstrates how we will get there and the benefits that that transition can hold and I think j just the symbolism of moving from coal mines just think it's only a hundred years ago that we were sending a million men and it was mainly men well, actually it was all men underground to dig out coal bring it back up a lot of them dying underground dying early as a result of being underground, but then to burn that coal to provide us with energy only 100 years ago. And now we're looking at better ways, better ways of getting energy, but will also be cleaner ways of getting energy, and we're not sending people underground to do it. And so I think uh, that symbolism is something, again, we should uh, make up. And again, if you look at our location here in Glasgow, one of uh, the hubs of that first industrial revolution as we face whatever number of industrial revolutions we're on. I think it's uh, four at the moment. Um, but here in Glasgow, in Dalmanock, it was the home of Sir William Arrell, company that built not only the fourth railway bridge, a fourth road bridge, but going down to England, uh, Humber Bridge and Tower Bridge as well. And the project continues that legacy into our green era and establishing Glasgow and this district as a city that's home of world-leading research. Again, something, you just look at all the universities that we have in Glasgow and research that I hope is going to help drive the next innovation in both industry and in infrastructure. Now, this should come for all of you who are Scots as no surprise. And Scotland has always been a hive of invention, pioneering in green energy, uh, far more than most people, particularly those of us from south of the border, imagine. I'm back in 1887. Uh, Professor James Blythe in Glasgow became the first person to use wind turbines to create electricity when he used that to power the lights in his village co cottage. I, one's always got to remember that not everyone in Scotland was quite so enlightened and his neighbours not being quite so forward-thinking and probably thinking it was the devil's work, um, I, I think, uh, turned down his offers to share that uh, power. I didn't know whether they burnt it down, but anyway, that sort of thing happened. Now, things have changed. It's only uh, 20 miles south on Eaglesham Moor. We have the UK's largest uh, onshore wind farm, 215 turbines generating enough energy for almost 300,000 homes. If I can be allowed, as an Englishman, someone who lives near Carlisle, but in Cumbria, just off Barrow, we have the world's now largest offshore wind farm, and I can't remember the number of uh, homes that that is powering, but again, that enormous progress we're making, bringing energy. But again, as uh, w w was said in the speeches, wind power obviously only comes at certain times and we have to look at new ways of storing that energy so that uh, the wind can be useful when it's not windy. Now, in the country that brought us James Watt, Alexander James Bell, we are now a leader in renewables and you are driving innovation with 
projects like this across the country. And if we take the world's most powerful tide turbine that you've recently trailed, um, it's reported to have generated, so I understand, more power in 12 months than Scotland's entire wave and tidal energy sector did in the preceding 12 years. And if you look, I was recently in Orkney at some of the projects up there. There's a community project known as Surf and Turf. Sometimes you come across Surf and Turf in restaurants, but that means something different. But uh, Surf and Turf, finding ways to store the energy when the grid can accept no more electricity, again, from the uh, community-owned wind turbines. And so it's no wonder that here in Scotland, much more than, again, south of the border, you're on track to meet your commitment to produce the equivalent of 100% of your electricity uh, by renewables from 2020. And in May of last year, um, you did wow the country by generating the equivalent of nearly 120% of Scotland's energy use from um, renewables, and that was a great achievement. Now, heat, as I understand it, is obviously much more of a challenge. In 2016, it was estimated just 5% of total Scottish heat demand was met from renewable sources, so that, again, is going to be a major issue for the whole of the UK. And again, this is why a project like this is exciting, and geothermal has that enormous potential, again, to help us uh, decarbonise our heating spine. It's been estimated that with all the mines in the central belt, you have the potential to provide as much as 12 gigawatts of heat. And then if we add up other traditional old mining areas, areas where we don't have mining anymore, other parts of England, areas like Yorkshire, areas like Durham, close to my own home, uh, there is more and more. And again, this project is going to be providing invaluable data. And again, it is so pleasing to hear that that data is going to be available to everyone. Invaluable data in helping us to understand or helping you to understand and other scientists, whether we can understand it is another matter, but uh, we'll get on to that. And I hope unlock that potential. So as I said in my opening remarks, it's not just that this project represents our country's energy future. It demonstrates how we might get there and the benefits uh, that may accrue if we do. And last year, when we launched our industrial strategy, and I'm wearing the badge uh, to mark it, we set out our long-term plans for the UK economy, and that sought uh, to build on our strengths and spread prosperity across the country. Um, working with colleagues in the Scottish Government and other devolved administrations and with local government, it's central to our ambition, and also working with business, with academe, and research institutes just to drive innovations. And one of the key aims of that strategy, one of the four challenges we saw, was to put clean growth at the heart of our economy. And we want to be able to lead the world in developing that low-carbon technology, and that will mean harnessing that tradition, that strong tradition in Scotland, strong tradition throughout the UK of invention and directing that to its cause. And again, I would just like to say that this project is a wonderful example of the sort of thinking in action. And we are so fortunate in this country to have the sort of expertise we have in geology, in the subsurface environment at the BGS and at NERC, and also in the Coal Authority. We're one of the world's leading authorities in coal mines. So this project is bringing together expertise with almost I add, 10 million pounds of government funding, just under a third of the total funding the government has provided for the UK geoenergy observatories. And it will place the United Kingdom as a world leader in coal mine geothermal research and ultimately, I hope, uh, the technology that's important as the world moves on to green technologies and despite what the US is doing, we want to be there as one of the leaders. So by positioning ourselves at the forefront of green innovation, we not only contribute to the crucial work in preserving our environment, but we also open up potentially enormous export markets. 
We also hope to create jobs, share prosperity across uh, the UK. And enhancing mine water, I think, has the potential to create significant local employment throughout the construction and development of schemes. So it is a real pleasure to be here. I hope I, I've just given some feeling of my enthusiasm. I'm looking forward to going out there, but I hope all of the rest of you feel that enthusiasm and the potential that we have in doing so. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. But thank you particularly to the three professors for offering that enthusiasm to start us off. Thank you very much. Thank you.